Over the last few months, I've been using AI app builders alongside our traditional no-code tools as we build applications for our clients. My favorite platform that I've been using right now is called Zite.com. Zite is an amazing platform for building internal applications. It has authentication, it's got its own backend database, and it's got visual workflows. It's probably not the best fit if you're just looking to make a website. Then you'd probably want to use Lovable. And if you're trying to build a consumer mobile MVP, it's really not the right fit there either. But if you're building CRM, project management tools, portals, this is really going to be a great fit. So after building lots of client applications and automation helpers, here's 10 tips I've uncovered to help you get the most out of Zite. Tip number one is to use Zite's own backend database. Yes, you can technically connect to other data sources like Google Sheets and Airtable, but there you're running into the limitations of those other platforms. I love Airtable and I use it all the time on projects, but if you've used it, you understand how limiting the API calls are. They restrict the number of API calls that you can make to five per second, and therefore it's very restricting if you want to use one of these other outside tools to connect to Airtable. Now, another reason besides the API restrictions is that Zeit, by having their own database, the LLM really understands the actual database, meaning you can use it to create your own metadata. You can use it to create the structure. And so you can have it retrieve records, understand the whole structure. A lot of other AI vibe coding platforms, because you have to connect to an external database, it doesn't have as good of an understanding about how to actually interact with it. And so you end up wasting a lot more credits as you're prompting because you're using this foreign database. Tip number two is to know your components. Most of the time you're gonna be prompting or you're working within the application itself, but you might find it helpful to go and actually view the code that exists behind the scenes. It's not really a great IDE if you want to actually code on your own. I typically leave this alone, but it is important that we actually know and understand the components. So here we have our app, which its primary function is really just to import the different components that we have. Next up, we have our CSS layer, which is going to change and affect how we actually style the application. But the real magic happens in our components. This is where all of our logic and the way that this is visualized on the screen this is where this is going to take place. For a simple application, it's typically going to create a component for each page that you have in your application. And so it's good to have an understanding of where the code lives within these components. Now here I'm building a more complex application. And so I have components here that are really multiple of these components within a page. And the nice part about this architecture is that if a component gets reused elsewhere, we don't have to recreate that code. We want to reuse it instead of recreating it. So I have this platform hover card that displays on multiple of my pages, and it can always just reference that one platform hover card. Now, in addition to knowing the components, you're also going to want to make sure that you can reference them by name as you're prompting the LLM. So as an example, here I have something called new rental, and this is a form to create rentals. On the rentals page, I can see a list of the rentals. If I go over to my dashboard, then I can see my upcoming rentals. If I'm not specific when I'm prompting and I just start talking about rentals, how's it going to know where exactly I'm referencing? And so some of the problems that you see where you feel like it's hallucinating are really just a misunderstanding of where that code is stored. And being able to reference it by name gives a much more specific direction of where to go to look within your code. Now, in addition to referencing component names, we also want to do the same with workflows. You can access your workflows in this section of the screen, and most of the time, Zite is going to create all of these workflows for you automatically. And a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory. You're going to get or create different objects. We can click into this and see it's pretty simple in terms of the actual structure. We've got our trigger, which is typically a Zite execution. We have a database step where we're retrieving information from the database. And we have some code where we can transform our data to return it to the front end. Now, this isn't quite the workflow builder of an Airtable or a Zapier. But still, it's nice to be able to see how that logic is functioning in the back end. By knowing how to reference your workflows, that's going to help a lot too when you build more complex kinds of logic. So here I have something more than just our CRUD operations. I'm trying to actually make some complex calculations based on multiple data sets. So I'm very clear when I'm prompting, hey, we need to use our calculate evaluation points in order to change and update our logic. One of the things that I do to get the most out of Zite is to have the system actually describe its understanding of the problem that I'm facing. I already know in my head how the logic is supposed to work, so I want it to summarize its own findings so that I can compare the two. 
So what I'm able to do is use their chat feature, which you can toggle on. And so I can ask questions like, how are you determining if this boat is available to be rented? I tried to build the logic before, but clearly something's not working. So rather than just trying to prompt and keep updating the code, I'm asking it to summarize all of its information ahead of time because that's where I can often identify discrepancies. You can also use the chat feature to suggest the prompt to actually execute the code. And so my recommendation would be to definitely review the suggested prompts before you actually execute them. The LLMs always sound so confident that they know exactly how to execute upon a feature. But I've had multiple times where I have to straight up disagree because they're taking the wrong approach to solve the issue at hand. So using chat to review their summarization and using chat to review their suggested prompts is really helpful. The next thing that you're going to want to do, even if you're not very technical, is to understand how to use the dev tools built within your browser. So if we're experiencing issues, we can tell it to log the data to our console so that we can inspect and see what's going on. So for example, for these rentals, I press next, and this has all of my form data so that I can review it here. And it's got information about the rentals coming back so that I can see and compare the actual data to make sure that I know what boats are available in this case. Now, you might want to clear out your console logs for production use case, but at least when you're building this, this is kind of your main way to be able to actually interact and see what's happening behind the scenes with your backend processes. Now, when it comes to debugging, sometimes you'll be adding a new feature and you'll see that you get a Zite error. There's a handy little button that says, fix it for me. And of course, that's the most natural thing. Press the button and have it magically fixed. But sometimes it can't easily fix the issue on its own. So I find it helpful to click on the one issue and actually expand the code so I can see under the hood what's going on. Oftentimes, it's a silly little syntax error that just totally trips up the whole system. And this ties to the next tip. Even if you don't know how to code, simply copying and pasting that into a separate tool like Claude or ChatGPT can sometimes open up this whole, oh yeah, I can see what issue's going on. It can summarize it, and then we can feed that message back into Zite. So if you find yourself wrestling with the same issue, the same bug over and over and over again, definitely pull it into some other tool to get some additional context about what's going on. And if you find yourself in the position where you just keep prompting and it keeps screwing up, you probably want to restore it to a previous version. Now, what's nice is we can click on history up at the top, and this shows us the different versions of our applications. We can actually click on it and have it load to see what the application looked like previously if we want to confirm before we restore it. Then you'll have a button where you can actually restore back to that point. Just be careful because once you restore it, then there's no coming back. And the final tip is to please back up your data. So in Zite's database, just as of today, we have the ability to actually import data via CSV file into our database. And I'm imagining we're just a couple days out from being able to export the data as well. Actually, by the time this video gets edited and published, we'll probably already have that feature. But in the meantime, I've been building my own export to CSV function that's not actually a part of this, that I just have a button on the front end, I can press it and download my own CSV files. Given the nature of LLMs and their ability to hallucinate, you just want to always make sure that your data is backed up. So I hope this was helpful to get inside my head a bit as I've been working with Zite for hundreds of hours. If you have any questions about building your own applications or systems, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free consultations. <laughs>